Good morning, dear friends in Christ, on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost, August 8th. And I do apologize if you hear construction equipment in the background. Uh, They are working very hard today. Uh, But thankfully, the road is starting to kind of get buttoned up here. So we are able to uh, drive by the church and park in the parking lot. Uh, So praise God for that. Uh, The focus of our worship this morning continues looking at John chapter 6, where Jesus tells us that he is the bread of life. And there is really no other food that can provide this promise of eternal life. And yet the people still wrestle with this truth in our text. In fact, we still uh, wrestle with Jesus' revelation here, seeking after all these things that satisfy our sinful desires and appetites. It's like junk food. It may taste good, but in the end, it leaves us still hungry and in worse health than before. But here Christ gives us the food that we need. Perhaps not always appetizing to us, but necessary. Here Christ reveals to us our sins, calling us to repentance and giving us the nourishing gospel, proclaiming the the sacrifice of his flesh and the promise of his resurrection, which grants us eternal life. So may we inwardly digest this precious gospel of our Lord this morning. If you'd like to follow along with our service, you may do so by turning to page 260 in your hymnal for the service of prayer and preaching. And dear friends, let us begin. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Our Old Testament reading for this 11th Sunday after Pentecost is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree, He asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistles from Ephesians chapter 4. This I say and testified in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, 
alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after, after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he might have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as, such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son of Man and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly. Truly I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. And we join together to confess our one Christian faith, starting with the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again this morning, we continue with where we left off in John's Gospel in chapter 6. After exclaiming that Jesus is the bread of life, Jesus then goes on to explain to the people gathered there about his descent from the Father to earth in order to fulfill the will of the Father by dying on the cross and by being raised from the dead and offering this gift to all people through faith. But as we mentioned last Sunday, the Jews were not so quick to receive this free gift. John writes, So the Jews grumbled about him. Because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus answered them, saying, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Food is an incredibly important part of our daily life. Sometimes we plan our whole day around what we're going to have for dinner. Or our family get-togethers around where we want to eat. Just drive through any small town, and the big draw for any tourist passing through is the local diner. But stop for a moment and think about the type of food that's being served at places like this. Is the food healthy? Does it keep you full? Does it nourish your body, or does it fill your arteries with junk? Now, we like junk food. It tastes good, it's cheap, it's easy to find. If you put a potato chip or a piece of broccoli in front of any child, it's pretty much a guarantee that they're going to pick up the chip. However, junk food cannot sustain us for very long. We eventually get hungry again, as that food is full of empty calories. We begin to thirst again as it fills our bodies with salt and fat. And thus begins the vicious cycle of planning the next meal and starting this process all over again. But if you eat what is nutritious and good for you, then you're full longer. You feel better. And as our doctors tell us, healthy foods help us live longer. Well, in today's text, Jesus is once again offering us something special here. A different kind of bread, not from the store or the bakery, but Miraculous bread from heaven. Bread that grants eternal life. I'd like to see your wonder loaf do that. 
Whoever eats of this bread, Jesus says, shall not die, but live forever. Now we know, of course, Jesus is referring here to himself. And oddly enough, the Jews understand that too, but they're not so quick to believe what Jesus is telling them. They scoff and grumble at him, saying, how can he say that he has come down from heaven? Isn't this Joseph's son? Don't we know his father and mother and his family? How can this man be the living bread from heaven? How can this Jesus be the one God sent to save his people? He's nothing more than a man, the son of a carpenter. Now it's that doubt in Jesus' words that would eventually lead to Jesus being placed on the cross. Jesus, by all appearances, looked to them an ordinary man. How can this son of a carpenter grant eternal life? Jesus' claim to be the Son of God would eventually cause the Jews to label him a blasphemer and would make him appear a lunatic to Pilate. The people considered Jesus to be another false messiah, just like so many who came before him offering empty promises, just another fast food meal lacking any real nutrition or sustenance. And many refused to eat from this bread of life. Many of these people chose instead to live their lives in hunger and thirst, filling their bellies with temporary solutions through their own merits and struggling to live in obedience according to their own interpretation of God's law. Eating bread that offered no life and drinking drink that offered no relief. And yet looking at the world today, people continue to do the same thing. Jesus offers us the bread of life, and people look at it and say, No thanks. I'm not hungry. I don't need your grace, God. I'm doing just fine on my own. But in reality, they're starving. These sin-sick beggars are literally turning down a free meal. Because of sinful pride, they think that they can produce this bread through their own obedience to the law. By being a nice person, by doing good things. That's what the world teaches us. This world is a buffet of temporary fillers, fast food with empty calories, things that may taste good, but in the end leave you feeling empty. And people gorge themselves with all sorts of false doctrine and ideas about what God really wants for his people. False teachings that proclaim Jesus was just a good role model, that he wasn't the Son of God, and so the cross is unimportant. Or God just wants you to be happy, so do what makes you happy. Or just be good and nice, and that's enough to cover these pesky sins of yours. And unfortunately, people believe it. They eat from the pig trough thinking that they're being fed God's word. But God's law doesn't demand good enough. God's law demands perfection. Jesus tells us time and time again, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now Jesus doesn't say this because we can actually achieve it. He said that to show us that it's impossible to fulfill the law of God and earn salvation on our own. Christ tells us, your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died. They lived by the law, and they died by the law. The sad reality is churches that teach this junk food are often filled to the brim. Not because it's the food that people need, but because it's the food people want. People want control over their fate, and so they flock to these false teachers that give them that control. And it can be tempting for us to want to be like them and do those same things. There's a real temptation to follow culture and give people what they want to hear. But my friends, all of it is worthless junk food, which leaves us just as hungry and thirsty as before. None of it can satisfy and fill us with what we need. It lacks the most important thing. Jesus, the bread of life, it lacks the true gospel. None of it can do what the bread of life does. 
Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. God has given us this precious, life-giving, life-sustaining food in his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, for this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. This is a far cry from the food of false doctrine that tells you that eternal life is easily gained by your own hands. Here in the gospel of Christ, he shows us that our life is in the Father's hands. God's desire is not for us to earn his favor, but for all to believe in his Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, in order that we too might have eternal life. The junk food of this world will leave us empty and hungry inside, but this living bread from heaven, this precious Son of God, will fill and satisfy like nothing else. Jesus descended from heaven long ago to offer himself as a precious sacrifice. He was broken and beaten on the cross and offered himself to all mankind. Jesus said, And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And indeed, Jesus did die for the world. Jesus shed his own blood. He sacrificed his own body so that you might receive the gift of eternal life. He came so that your sins may be forgiven, so that God would no longer hold them against you, but rather welcome you as a precious child into his kingdom. God feeds you with his word so that you could learn this very truth. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me, Jesus says. God draws, away, draws us away from the temptations of these fast food doctrines and empty caloric teachings, and instead feeds us with life-giving words and the very body and blood of Jesus Christ in the sacrament. It isn't always pleasant to hear we are sinners in need of grace. In some ways, it's like getting broccoli instead of ice cream. But it is necessary for us to hear. Here, God calls us to receive the gospel in its purest form, to avoid empty false doctrine that will leave you hungry and instead be filled with Jesus. He is the very bread of life. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. What greater gift could anyone ask for? Not only does this bread fill our bellies with the gospel so that we no longer hunger, but it also gives us life. Jesus is our living bread. Even though he died on the cross and was placed in the tomb, he did not remain dead. Jesus defeated death, being resurrected on the third day. And later that same day, he was found breaking bread with his disciples. And now Jesus offers this gift to you. So my friends, I encourage you to take and eat from this living bread that Christ gives you. If you seek to have your hunger satisfied and your thirst quenched, then you need look no further than to Jesus. He freely, he freely offers you this gift of grace and much more through his flesh. He is the living bread that came down from heaven. He is the precious Son of God who died for the sins of the whole world, including yours. And, though, and through his death obtained eternal life for all who believe in him. This is the bread of life given for you. Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. Let us inwardly digest what Christ feeds us with this morning. And now, my dear friends, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith until life everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. And once again, dear friends, if you would like to submit your tithes and offerings to the church, you may do so by mailing them to Emanuel Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 35, Eagle Bend, Minnesota. Or you can mail it to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 425 in Clarissa, Minnesota. Or simply go online to our website, 
eaglevalleylcms.org. Uh, you can click on the donation page, and there's an online giving option. You can set up a one-time gift or a recurring gift for either church. And as always, we pray that God would continue to provide for you and your families with everything that you need for this daily life. And so, dear friends, let us go to our Lord in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and a pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our brothers and sisters in the care centers, for those who have requested our prayers, especially for Phil Skolte, for Earl Lutke, for our sister Helen Keene, and for our brother Dwayne Bartles, and for all other members of our community who are in need of our prayers at this time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. And dear friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And dear friends, before we depart, just a few announcements here. Our special service for our high-risk members will be September 5th at 12 o'clock here at Emmanuel. Once again, we do ask that you wear masks for that service, and we do provide communion for that service as well. Uh, depending on attendance, as the last couple of services have had very low attendance for these high-risk services, this may be the last one for the time being, unless we see a need to bring it back, um, and unless we see the attendance going up in this next service. So this may be the last one, September 5th. Uh, so if you do want to have the service still, uh, please make that known to us. Either contact me, uh, call me, or uh, show up to the service on September 5th. Uh, VBS will be starting at St. Matthew's next Sunday, August 15th at 5 o'clock. So please come prior to 5 o'clock to sign in your kids and get them ready. Uh, but we will go from 5 to 7.30. 
Uh, you can also register your kids and grandkids online by going to eaglevalleylcms.org slash VBS. Uh, you'll see a VBS tab at the very top of the page. Please sign up online because it, it puts all the information together for us. So all we have to do is then print out a sheet rather than trying to gather everybody's individual information and kind of bring it together on our own. Uh, all ages are welcome to join us for that. We especially, especially have some younger uh, kids in that group. So we are going to try to cater more towards the younger uh, kids and trying to use some of the older kids to maybe help with that and kind of introduce them to being mentors and, and uh, uh, teaching the younger ones how to act in VBS. So uh, all ages are welcome to attend. Also, if you want to volunteer, you can go to that same link uh, that's on our website. Uh, just sign up as a volunteer and we'll know that you're there to help. And then we can assign you uh, things to help us with. And the theme for this year's VBS is God's Wonder Lab. And so it's, it's going to be a, a fun time. Also, Sunday school will be starting at St. Matthew's this fall. Uh, all ages are welcome for that as well. And we will have a sign-up sheet in the coming weeks. We'll probably have a sign-up sheet even at the end of VBS uh, so that we can uh, get in contact with those families that attended VBS and see if they're interested in Sunday school. Uh, in honor of Kay Nelson, there will be music in the park on August 8th, uh, which is this Sunday. Uh, starting at 1.30, so please join us at Nelson Park to celebrate this gift of music that Kay desired to share with the community. Uh, and then tentatively, there will be a funeral, funeral service uh, for Kay Nelson. It's planned for September 18th. Uh, that'll be a firmer date the closer we get to it, uh, but that's currently the, the calendar date that we have, uh, but we will let you know if anything changes. Uh, quilting Ladies will be quilting August 11th and 12th from 9 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. So that's this coming week here at St. Matthew's. Uh, also, please keep bringing in your jean scraps and, and your uh, bed sheets, size king and queen. They use those for the backing of, of the uh, quilts. Also, there will be a joint elders meeting this Wednesday at St. Matthew's at August 11th at 7 o'clock. So please be aware of that, elders. Uh, we will be discussing some uh, of, of the important issues uh, coming up for our quarterly meeting. Uh, so please, if you are an elder, uh, try to make that meeting. Uh, we'll be discussing things like health insurance and changes that we'll have to make uh, with Jesse and I expecting the twins and, and uh, expanding our family. Uh, and then after the elders meeting, there will be an Emmanuel quarterly meeting next Sunday, August 15th, right after service. And then St. Matthew, Matthew's will have their quarterly meeting uh, Sunday, August 22nd at 12 o'clock, so a little bit after the second service. So please be aware of all those things. They are on our online calendar as well. Um, and we pray that God would continue to bless each and every one of you. It sounds like they're uh, getting closer to the church and, and working on stuff here. So it's perfect timing uh, for this. I pray that God would continue to bless each and every one of you. And we hope to see you in God's house. Go in his peace. Amen.